there are basically, most of the time with these, a couple of things that go application that look directly like what we've been doing. And a couple others where we're thinking, but we're having to make an expression or an equation out of this. The two most classic ones are the two at the very top that would show up. Where you can work a job in a certain time and somebody else can work a job in a certain time. If we work together, how long would it take us working together on this? So here's basically how these are going to work. There's a formula to these, but you'll see in a second here why this would work this way. And it looks something like this. And you probably will be able to guess pretty quickly what everything stands for. This is the time that the first person can do it in. This is the time the second person can do it in. And this is the time they're gonna be able to do it together. So if I get a problem like number one, says, okay, working alone, Jasmine can sweep a porch in nine minutes. Okay. So one over her time. Stephanie can sweep the same porch in 12 minutes. That's my T2. So right now I've got this part, and I have this part. How long would it take if they worked together? I don't know what the total T is. Unfortunately, I would still would have to be able to figure out what that denominator value is going to be. So to be able to add them together, but we would have to have an LCD, right, to be able to add them together. Now, if we added them together, though, if I added 1 9th and 1 12th, wouldn't that actually be more time? Well, let's find out. So here's my deal. What's my LCD going to be for this? Now, there's a couple of ways you could do this. Some of you are looking at going, 36, where's that coming from? If I started counting by 9s and 12s, I could, would get to 36 after a while. It would be the first number that I'd see in common in both of my lists. So some of you are going to say, I'm going to cringe, but I'm going to say yes. Couldn't you just multiply 9 and 12 together and then use that? Yes, and I'm going to show you how you could do that, but why it might be a little bit helpful to use the smaller value. So here, once I do this, we're going to multiply through by the LCD, and it's going to help clean all this up. You're like, well, wait a minute. What? You're going to multiply through by it. How's, how's that work? Well, here's how it works. And some of you are going to do this in your head, and some of you are going to need to do some side work, and that's okay. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 36t on top of every one of these fractions, and I'm going to simplify it. Because if I were to distribute this all the way through, which is basically what we're doing, it would end up looking like this. which is going to be maybe easier in this case than building fractions. Because I look, oops, that's supposed to be equals, excuse me. I just reduce each of the fractions. I go, okay, that first one, the T's can cancel out. It's not a strong bond. So that's just 36. 36 divided by 9 is 4. But I still have the T there. It didn't cancel out. Then here I've got 36 over 12 which would be 3, or 3t. Three Just that quick, all the fractional junk is gone because I can deal with an LCD. So at this point, I go, okay. Because the time I get with them together should be shorter than them working alone. So my answer better be below 9 minutes, or I'm in trouble here. So let's see. 36 divided by 7. So about a little over five minutes it would take if they worked together, which is sensible because it should take a shorter amount of time if two of you are doing the same thing. But to put some of you at ease, because sometimes this will just work easier, 
For those of you that said before, can I just do it? Can I just multiply and call the LCD 108? So 108T. Would it work the same way? Would I get the same answer at the end? Let's find out. If I use 108 instead, and I multiply it through all the way, and again, some of you will start seeing the shortcut. You're like, so basically I can just put the LCD on top of each one of these and just reduce them right away. It's true. Now, if some of you are comfortable with your LCDs and you're finding the smallest ones right away, shoot, keep doing it that way. It's going to make life simple. But you'll notice the setup ends up looking very similar to what it did on the last one. But bottom line is, let's see if the answer comes out the same. Yeah. Okay. So if you're more comfortable just being able to look every time and say, well, I'm just going to multiply those three things together and use that as my LCD, that's fine. Okay. You'll get to the same answer. You're just dealing bigger numbers. So no panic. Okay. Don't stress yourself out with the LCD part and make the part that should be easy, you know, not so much because you're overthinking it. Now the second one looks similar, but there's a little twist. Working alone. Jennifer can wax the floor in 13 minutes. You're like, okay, we're 13. One day, her friend Jose helped her, and it only took 5.32 minutes. That's not Jose's time. That's their time together. Because now I'm trying to find out Jose's time, another single person's time. So it matters. I can't just put this in this slot. It wouldn't work. So if you're given the together number, the together number would go over here. And this is why we're thankful we can just multiply the denominators together. Because I don't want you spending like all evening trying to figure out 5.32 and 13. Oh my gosh, what am I ever going to do? Just multiply them together. It's going to be the strangest LCD you've ever seen, but that's what it is. 69.16 and that T that we have down there. So I just multiplied them together. Here's the other neat trick. Instead of having to go through like we did and set up all those big funky looking things, you're never going to guess, well, you will in a second here, how these are going to end up simplifying down. Because we said before, this is just going to end up on the top of each of these fractions. Hmm, what a coincidence. When I divided through by here, 69 divided by 5.32 was 13. That's interesting. Oops, I forgot my t squared. My t2. What do you think 69.16 divided by 13 is going to be? It probably is going to be quite a coincidence, but I think that might be right. Oh, it's that same number again. So I start to see as I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, well, maybe, just maybe. And then the last one, just the t squared, the t2, excuse me, I shouldn't say t squared, that's incorrect, just cancels. Now, if you are more comfortable. And again, this is going to be personal preference. If you're more comfortable writing it out like we did on the other problem, literally making the fractions and then reducing them, do it. Don't think, well, I have to do it this way. But no, you don't. Do the way, if you're more visual, that feels comfortable. Because now I'm going to subtract this to the other side because it's just like solving any equation. I need all my t's together. So I'm going to subtract that over. Leaves me with 7.68. And yes, you are going to get funky answers on these. Whole answers, not going to happen very often. And then I'll just divide by that 7.68 because I want T to be by itself. So it looks like it would take Jose 
just a tick over nine minutes on his own to do this, which makes sense because if her time's at 13 and together they're a little over five, the answer should be somewhere in between. If it was below that, I'd kind of be like, what? But that's going to be your setup. This is the setup each time. You just have to figure out which T values that you have on each of those. That's going to be the easiest way to go. Because then on these others, okay, now we're going completely different here. A diesel train, excuse me, made a trip to Las Vegas and back. On the trip that there, it traveled 40 kilometers per hour, and on the return trip, it went 90 kilometers per hour. How long did the trip take if the return trip took eight hours? Now, I am a big fan of charts. Don't ask me why. I just like the visual being able to see how everything works. And I know that distance equals rate times time. I know that from lots of different places and formulas that we've worked. So I look and I go, okay, I'm going to make a chart. Here's my distance, here's my rate, here's my time. So what do I know? Well, let's see here. I know that on the way there, I went 40. And I don't know how long it took me to get there, at least not yet. Then I also know that on the way back, I was going 90. But I do know how long I was going on the way back. It took me eight hours. So basically, what I'm looking at here is, they went the same distance, I'm just trying to figure out how long this one took. So since distance equals rate times time, let me multiply these guys together, and let me multiply these guys together. And since they went the same distance, those have to be the same. So I just use the chart to kind of organize my thoughts a little bit. And then I divide by 40, and I find out that initial trip going 40 took about 18 hours for me to get there. But you just notice the setup of I use the chart and I start filling in values that I know. Sort of like what I did up in 1 and 2, except they're not fractions this time. That's kind of nice. But the key to these, like they have been to everything else, is get in there and dig out the information that you need. Because I can keep using the same formula over and over. It just, you know, what info am I given and how is this going to work? All right, let's see what else we got here. This one's a little bigger fishing boat left the Azores and traveled towards St. Vincent at an average speed of 25 kilometers per hour. Okay, so 25. And this is my fishing boat, so I'm just going to make myself a little note out here. A cruise ship, okay, left some time later, traveling in the same direction at an average speed of 30 kilometers per hour. After traveling for five hours, the cruise ship wait, time cruise ship, five hours. Every bit of information could help me here to make this simple. Caught up with the fishing boat. In other words, they've gone the same distance, just like they did back in this problem. Find the number of hours the fishing boat traveled before the cruise ship caught up. Just like before, there's a lot more blah blah info in here. It's not quite as straightforward. But it's still distance equals rate times time. So this would be 25 T. 30 times 5 is 150. And again, they, it caught up. They started from and ended up in the same place. So they have to be equal to each other. And it would make sense if the first ship's going slower, that it's going to take longer. That also helps me make sure I set it up right. Like if it had come out quicker, it'd be like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But again, don't overthink, but try to use the chart. If you plug in numbers and you get a crazy answer, you're like, okay, maybe I need to move these around a little bit. But again, it's going to cause a little play. 
but the basic formula still is going to work. And then the last one, this might be more helpful in science class if you're blending things together. We got 12, 12 pounds of peaches that cost $9 a pound. Holy cow, it's expensive. We're combined with six pounds of sliced bananas, which cost $6 a pound. Find the cost per pound of the mixture. All right, I'm still going to chart it. Let's see, what things do I know? I know how much it costs per pound. I know the number of pounds. And then I'm going to know a total cost. And if you want to use different language with this, you can. Maybe you want to put money per pound and then pounds. I don't know. But again, it just lets me organize my thoughts a little bit. So I'm like, okay, what do I know? I got 12 pounds of peaches that are $9 per pound. And then I have six pounds of bananas, which are $6 a pound. Find the total cost of the mixture. Oh, find the cost per pound, excuse me, of the mixture. You're like, okay, well, if it's $9 a pound and there's 12 pounds, I spend $108 on peaches, yeah. If bananas are $6 a pound and I bought six pounds, I spent $36 on those. You're like, okay, so if I add those up, I spent $144. How many pounds of fruit do I have? I just add those together. So if I have 18 pounds of fruit and it costs $144, Dividing 144 by 18 will give me price per pound. For my fruit salad, I guess we'll say, consisting of peaches and bananas. But again, and that makes sense. My mixture needs to be somewhere in between these. If I got an answer that was like $12 a pound, that'd make no sense. So this is more of a, an exercise of common sense than it's going to be of anything else. Same setup for the last one, even though it looks different. How many gallons of an 80% sugar solution? Okay, so we're going to have these percentages. We're going to have gallons. And we'll go back to total here again. So how many gallons? How many? X, don't know. 80%. Now here's the kicker. I'm going to be doing a math problem with this, so I need it in a form I can use. So I'm going to use the decimal form here. Must be mixed with 10 gallons, now here's the fun part, of pure water. How much sugar solutions in pure water? None. Zero percent. To make a 30 percent solution. Let the fun begin. Okay, so I've got 80% of X gallons. I don't know how much, because again, I'm just multiplying across. Zero times anything is zero. How many gallons do I have at the end? Well, if I just keep adding down, However many gallons of that 80% sugar solution plus the 10 gallons of water I have will make my total. So I just add them up. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add these up. So I look and I did something boneheaded. Because you're like, Hardy, we've been multiplying across. Why didn't you multiply across there? Because I did a boneheaded move good thing I have white out. If I'm multiplying across, I need to multiply across. I can't just add down on there, silly man. So. Because now I can look here and I can say, okay, so this plus this has to equal this combo that I have. So my sugar solution plus my pure water equals my combo solution. 
So now I gotta tackle this as any old regular Algebra 1 problem that I'd be dealing with. Get all my x's to one side so I could subtract the point 30 and then divide by that point 5. And it looks like I would need 6 gallons of my sugar solution to go with my 10 gallons of water to make it that 30% solution that I need it to be. Now, like I said, this is just getting you some opportunities to see how these set up in pieces so we don't necessarily have to go into panic mode with any of them. So again, the task at hand is working on the two worksheets that you picked up today. Come in tomorrow with any questions on them and we'll jump right in after questions to the Unit 5 review.